Here comes Yasnir Toledo. Toledo from Cuba, ranked number three in the world. He's facing Hansoon of the Korean Republic. Hansoon, 27 years old, 179 centimeters. Referee Frank Sharma from Germany will officiate. And the judges, Rene Just, De Castro, Caulfield, Chinar, and Alvarado, will be counting the punches from ringside. This is the 2011 Aiba World Boxing Championships in Baku 2011. And Castle Chalice calling the action, the action from ringside. Let's take a look at Lopez's record, at least part of it, and what got him here in 2009. He plays six at the Aiba World Boxing Championships. In 2010, last year at the Pan American Championships in Quito, Ecuador, he placed first. Also placed first earlier this year at the Pan American Games in Quaman, Venezuela. Cumana, excuse me. And earlier this year, he grabbed the gold at the Cuban National Team Championships. Yesterday, he beat Silen RD of Thailand 20 to 9. Han Soon Chul of Korea. The he participated in the 07 Aiba World Championships. He also took ninth at the Aiba World Championship. That was in 07 in Chicago. In 09, he placed ninth in Milan. And last year at the Korean National Championships, he grabbed a gold. He also boxed earlier this year at the Asian Championships in Incheon. Yesterday, Han Sun Chul beat Liu Kiang of China 16 to 9. That brings them both to the semifinals excuse me, the quarterfinals that you're watching today. The winner goes on to the semifinals on Friday. Both of these boxers have already secured a spot in the Olympic Games in London next year. So now Toledo out of the red corner from Cuba, Han out of the blue corner from Korea. Han starts to press the action. The Cubans brought an excellent squad here. They're doing very well here this tournament. You'll be seeing a great Cuban super heavyweight later on this evening as well in just about an hour from now, about four more bouts. But now we're still in the 60 kilogram weight class and Toledo looking very sharp, throwing a nice right hand over the top of the left of the Korean. Korean seems to be pressing the action, as is often the case, the taller Cuban boxer, just like in the earlier bout with Valentia, Val Domenico Valentino and Miklos Varga. You could see how the taller Toledo, in this instance, is gonna try and stay on the outside, at least for now, and use his long limbs, his long legs, his long arms, his lightning fast reflexes, and box from the outside, try and pick up some points early over the Korean. Perhaps if he feels he's got a secure enough lead, if he could do that after a round or so, he may try and start standing toe to toe and pick it up a little bit. For now, he'd be well served to keep doing what he's doing. The Korean's gonna find himself on the receiving end of many of these long, fast fists of fury by the Cuban, unless the Korean could somehow stem the tide. He's standing a little bit upright, making himself somewhat of an easy target for Toledo. Han would be well served to bob and weave a little more and to try and show more angles. Also more lateral movement. You notice how he's just moving in and out. He's advancing when Toledo retreats and he's retreating when Toledo advances. However, with Toledo's advantage in speed and reach, Han would be better served using more lateral movement, stepping to the side, causing Han to have to turn with him in order to land his punches. To add more complications to Han's problems, Toledo's boxing in the southpaw stance, which is just a, a less common style and one that Han probably hasn't encountered as much throughout his amateur career. Pulling right jab by Toledo, full short, Han staying on his mark. That's going to be the end of the first round.
Take a look at the action from round one and you'll see how the score became 6-3 for the Cuban. Now, Toledo continuing to circle away from the Korean boxer. The Korean continuing to put the pressure on. A right-left-right right combination. Nice lightning-fast reflexes by Toledo. And Han, seemingly unfazed, continues to press the action. Han playing the stalker, or rather, stalking Toledo around, while Toledo feeling very comfortable letting himself be stalked because he knows those are his opportunities to really to create the activity, to create the action because as Han continues to follow him around the ring as he's doing, Toledo is able to really decide what he wants to do next. Han really has less choice in the matter. He may not realize it, but it's true. Han has to follow Toledo around. He's down on points. Toledo, on the other hand, can decide when he wants to engage he could decide when he wants to go, where he wants to go, and Han is pretty much relegated to playing the lead of following him. So it's interesting that the Korean is both stock R and stock E at the same time, while Toledo gets to watch and pot shot as he deems necessary. He's up by three. There's a minute 20 left. Nice footwork. And now here comes Toledo, perhaps going to start to let his hands go a little bit more. in this round. As we suspected, once he grabbed a little lead as he did in the first round, he may be more willing to stand toe to toe with Han. And I wouldn't be surprised if he does, that he's able to end this bout early. It doesn't look like he wants to finish this fight early, but I imagine if he starts to apply the pressure to Han, Han may just not be able to weather the storm. His defense is a little bit loose. His hands are low. And I don't think he could match Toledo in the speed department. Now we have to give it to Han. He's staying in there. He's making it a game contest. He's, he's got the will. He's got the, the desire. He's made it this far. He just needs to keep pushing. Ten seconds left in round number two here. It's a 60 kilogram bout between the Osnir Toledo and Han Soon. And now the score goes up 10 6 to the Cuban. So the Korean keeping it somewhat competitive. It's only a four point bout. He's going to need to do more in round number three, that is for sure, in order to finish this victorious. Take a look at the action from round number two, and you'll see how the scoring became 10-6 for the Cuban. Referee standing by. Watching closely. Round three getting ready to begin. And now with a 10-6 deficit going into the third and final round, the Korean is gonna have his work cut out for him. Right-left combination out of the gate by Toledo. 
Toledo may try and pour on some points here. He may feel comfortable. Like to see more combination punching by Toledo. He's really throwing one, maybe one, two punch combinations at a time. He could do a lot more. He could go down to the body of Khan. He could come back upstairs. He could try and finish this man. You know, Toledo may have what he thinks is a, a fairly easy opponent in front of him. Well, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't necessarily call it easy. But while he may feel that he has an easy opponent in front of him, he's still got a lot of tough opponents in front of him throughout the course of this tournament. Others that he'll be meeting in the Olympic Games, no doubt, in less than a year from now. Why not put an ounce of fear in their hearts and in their minds? Make himself a knockout boxer, a knockout artist. Try and finish Han early. That's the objective here, is to get out of this as quick as you can with as little harm as possible. So if Toledo could change his style just a little bit from the box outside boxer to the aggressive puncher. With less to lose here, Han hasn't really shown much in the way of punching power. He hasn't shown much in the way of speed. There's not that much that should scare Toledo about taking a little risk here at the second half of the third round. Maybe he could go for it, go for the knockout, finish his man early, and put a little fear in the hearts and minds of his fellow 60-kilogram boxers. Put the men's lightweight division on notice that the Cuban is coming to the Olympics in London, and he means business. Nice left hand by Toledo. Good reflexes by Toledo as well to stay away from that right hand by Han. Han continuing to box, continuing to try and find a way in. He just hasn't thrown any punches. And why? Because he's had no one to punch. Toledo has been able to effectively keep three to four feet distance between himself and Han the entire bout. That's why Han hasn't thrown any real punches, because he has no, no one to punch. That's the closest thing right there. A short punch from way too far away. Of course it's not going to land. He's using that jab to measure his man. By the time he goes to pull the trigger, and he doesn't even actually pull it, but by the time he's about to pull it, Toledo's gone already. Now they're going to lock horns in the middle. 20 seconds or so left here in the third round of this lightweight contest. And Toledo still hasn't really figured out how to score effectively or at all for that matter. He's got a few points, but I think they were more because Toledo let him mix it up. Because clearly Toledo has the ability to keep the Korean off of him throughout this contest if he chooses. And that's it. We'll get the official score in just a moment. And the Cuban, as expected, pulls out a, an impressive victory. He's going to be a tough man to beat in this lightweight division. There's no doubt about that. He's got a great body for boxing. Tall, long, lean, fast, great reflexes, straight punches. It'd be nice to see his ability to engage more because he's not always going to have an opponent like the one he just had that has trouble finding him. Eventually, he's going to have to deal with a boxer that's going to stand on his chest and make him box. And when that happens, will he be able to do so? Can he stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and exercise those reflexes at close quarters? We'll find out, sure enough, more likely sooner than later. <laughs> 